All right, guys, let's get at it. We got this 1080p running off of a MacBook Pro on this Odyssey G9. It looks amazing, but it's not at its max capacity. So let's go ahead and get it set up. I got a plan. All right, we're going to execute the plan. We're going to see if it works. You can see if I run them in side by side, like two monitors off my MacBook Pro, that it will give me the full resolution on each screen, but you can't use the middle. And this is it, it's a MacBook Pro. I run it headless, the monitors, you know, it cracked, I took it off. And it's got too many display ports run into one HDMI and one display port. And it works pretty good, you know? I kind of like the two monitor situation for some workflows, but anyway, this is what we're putting in it. Two terabyte SSD. We got this cable, which I'm gonna spend a long time on because it's kind of the magic to pull it all together. We got one USB-C side, the other one goes to the display port. I've tried all these cables. I don't know if that extension cord counts, but the point is this Maxinar one that I found, uh, it promotes itself as being compatible with the M1 chip, and it promotes itself as being compatible with the Samsung Odyssey G9, and specifically not the G7, which tells me they did their testing. All right, I also got this Electfi uh, USB-C drive enclosure. I went over to Satachi with that one. And I also got this Mac Mini, the star of the show. It's got 512 in terms of storage bumped, and then it's got 16 gigabytes bumped up over the eight gigabytes of RAM. And I'm pretty pumped. I think it's gonna be a great workhorse. Let's go ahead and get everything pulled out. Uh, the drive is a crucial two terabyte, 2.5 inch SSD. Um, we use them all the time in the shop, and so I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be great. I just like that cut. <laughs> it's just so loud. Uh, all right, anyway, that's our hard drive. Um, I'm gonna pull the cable out here, but in the meantime, I'm gonna talk about the enclosure, okay? Because some of the, lots of the enclosures have that internal place to put that hard drive. Yeah, lifetime product warranty. And like the Satachi doesn't. Now, if we look at this, okay, it says 4K at 120. All right, so the cable should get us where we need to go. And, you know, we're not going to get it to 240 yet. That's okay, you know. And i got some other specs here you guys can look at, you know. But basically the point is this cable is supposed to work. All right, like I was talking about with this hard drive, it has the internal enclosure. Even And some of them look identical, but they don't have that. Later on, you're going to see that's going to give me a little bit of separation in between the Mac Mini when the Mac Mini is on top and then the enclosure underneath. That really bummed me out. And But... You know, if you want the enclosure in there, you can't really have that divot, so it kind of comes with the with the game. Um, you know, that that two terabyte drive in there is really for additional storage uh, for editing, and then also I'm going to use it for a time machine backup, uh, just to backup locally with direct connection through USB-C. Should be plenty fast. Um, let's just kind of watch. Let's watch. Let's watch the master work putting in this solid state drive. Quiet, quiet. All right, perfect install, no problems there whatsoever. Let's show off the work. Out of way. And we're gonna read the instructions. And we're gonna undo it. So if you guys get this specific kit, all right, from Electafee, uh, it has these pads that are actually a little bit thicker than the plastic ones that come from Crucial. And use those, basically. It's gonna take away any of the play that's internal that would cause that drive to bump up and down. Not that it matters so much with solid state, but it's better to have it be in a solid state on moving if it does get bumped around then a little bit of free air in there. So, you know, I, I'll just comment right now. I never in my entire life, and using Mac products for 
not that whole time, but about 10 years, considered buying a Mac Mini. Um, there's just no way. It was the silliest computer in the world. So after seeing the M1 releasing this, I thought, maybe. You know, may maybe this is what I want. Um, by the way, or you can do it from a cell phone. I'm talking to my guys in the shop, they're giving them advice. Um, I'm running Big Sur at this point, 11.2.3. Um, that does seem to matter. They they hooked it up a little bit more after that. And so with that bump up in, in that processor, you know, I, and I'll go ahead and say, uh, after using it now for a while, it's the best computer I've ever used. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the desk out here and get ready to do the funnest part for me, which is connecting all the cables. Love doing, you know, AV home installs and stuff like that. So doing it on my own setup is like the best possible way to spend an afternoon. I'm gonna make some adjustments here just to point out that we got two inputs currently from that MacBook Pro on the wall. One is HDMI and one is into DisplayPort 1. We're gonna put this second computer, this Mac Mini M1, into DisplayPort 2. You may have noticed there the extreme violence that that sheath came off with. It always comes off like that. Like you get, you're, you'll be like not trying to break this $1,500 monitor, pulling on it, and it's not coming off, and it's not coming off. Let's see if I can get it. Got it. And uh, and then it just comes off all at once, and it scares the bejesus out of you. You may have seen a little tag on the back of it. I'm gonna show it off right now. It's I couldn't find it. What this? What anyone to tell me what this meant? But basically, they're saying don't carry it by the hinge point. Or put your hand under the bottom, which may seem intuitive as I'm saying it to you, but when you are putting it together and wanting to pick it up, you're gonna wanna pick it up at that hinge point in order to, it, it just feels natural. So, but if you think about the physics logically, it's much more natural for this stand to hold the weight of this monitor as it sits on your desk. So pick it up by the stand. All right, that's that's a pro tip because it's an, it was difficult enough for them to put the sticker on there. And I looked through all videos, no one else talked about the sticker, so I'm talking about the sticker. They put it on there, you know, a year later after release, because apparently people were breaking those things. Alright, let's go ahead. We're ready, we're ready. Hit the button, and... Bingo, we got power. Alright, first time I forgot to plug it in, so that's why that was a long cut. Second time, let's get a, a feel of how long it takes to load up. I'm not going to make any cuts. All right, now interestingly here enough, they it boots right into the already loaded operating system. Didn't get to see the app or the loading bar. Since then, I do see the loading bar pop up about halfway through, and that's pretty typical. It's just as quick as you think an M1 would be. Make a little height adjustment here. Let me get the cords in the back. This turns out to be a great opportunity to test the front-facing USB ports in order to connect my monitor and my mouse. First, I thought it didn't work, but then I remember it's got a little on switch on top. I think it can support a 6K display. Nolan says that thing can support a 6K display, so that's good. You'll hear him throughout the video. And it looks great. I'm like, I'm super pumped at this point. All right, so we're dragging it. It, it says 1440, okay? It says 5K, but it the drag seems a little bit off. All right, so pay attention to this next step. We're going to check it on the monitor first. Hold down option, click the, the size adjustment, it'll give you the actual the actual resolution values. And we'll click through them here just because we're all curious what they look like, right? But you see you got the 5120 by 1440. Awesome. Right in there first time. Didn't have to do anything. It just booted right into that with that cable. Have you, well, when you click refresh rate, what are This the doesn't look right. Yeah, that doesn't look like that. No one says it's not 120. Alright, it says 120. 
120 for the monitor. Oh, there we go. But only 60 on the OS. Now. Yeah, that is absolutely 120. I use a 144. So. No one uses 144, so, you know, he's used to it. But y you can tell, like, there's, you know, it's not a... It's not magic, and there's some dilution in the image, but you can tell it it doesn't keep up as well at 60 hertz. So you want to make sure to change it on the monitor. Well, actually, it changed it automatically for me, but you do have to change it in the OS, at least as of this operating system. So I'm going to go ahead and this point and put it to sleep. Listen, the whole part where it goes to sleep and then you hit spacebar to bring it back up, it's, it's about 90%, okay? But sometimes you got to reach back there and unplug it. And it's a bummer, but it's a value of USB-C, not the computer itself, from what I can tell reading around about other products. I want this gap gone, okay? I want to see the apple on top. I'm going to take it down the street, see what this guy. Yes. Can you take the bottom off this? Uh, sure, I'm one. I'm going to tell him to be easy. Easy. He's just going to dive right at it easy. with the black stick. I mean, just, that's the way he is. But to be fair, he did. Pull it off my problems. And I received the bad news. It still has a gap. No, I need it, I need it flat. No, because you have this. One part's held in by this, and then the Wi-Fi card is Like it's I thought just that little plastic bezel at the bottom was what made it stick out, but the actual aluminum body is is curved. Yeah. That was the whole thing. All right, super happy with the way it came out. Looks great. And I think the most important thing here is what other combination can you put together that comes out with this clean of a setup with this type of performance and this type of screen real estate for under $3,000? With the monitor, with the bumped M1, with 512 and 16 gigs of RAM and the enclosure and Apple Care Plus, all that together with the cables. So this is my recommendation. But if you're thinking about it, let me know and I'll answer any questions you got.